How's everybody doing? We're going live. Gigi Inspire brought Jasmine on today. How you doing? Hi. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. How are hi. you? Today we're going to talk about procrastination. All right, I'm going to invite some people in. Welcome to Gigi Inspire. So excited for another day. It's Thursday, 1 o'clock. We do it every single week. And uh, today we're going to talk about procrastination. That's our topic today. Uh, Jasmine's going back and forth from Instagram to Facebook, trying to do both of them at the same time. So we're working on it. Um, please invite in your friends, invite some people. We're going to talk about entrepreneurship and uh, being in business. I've been in business for 10 years, and yeah. one of my biggest reasons for being in business is so I can spend time with my girls. Mm. Love them. Uh, so. Jazz, do you ever procrastinate? Uh, no. no, never. So do you ever have something that uh, we ask you to do, that mommy and daddy ask you to do that you don't want to do? Yeah, like what? Hmm? Math. That's a good one. Math works. Uh, I believe that. <laughs> Sometimes I procrastinate at math too, but I procrastinate about a lot of things. And I think a lot of us procrastinate about a ton of things. So we're going to share some of those today. So invite some people in. Please comment. Please share with us your questions. Actually, when you get in, you jump in. Please let us know, you know, where you're coming from, what city you're in, what, city you're in, what state you're in, uh, and then uh, feel free to ask me any questions you have about procrastination. I would like to make sure we make it as much and as very interactive as we can, and uh, let people know kind of what you are thinking about and uh, maybe what you do when you're procrastinating. Okay, good. You you, you done? Yeah. No. no. You want to stay? Okay. You got to move over to the side. Ugh. Okay, good? All right, so we'll do this. All right, so welcome. Hi, Mia. Hi, Jewel. Hey, Erica, Russ, Jason, Kelly. How are you? Good to see you. Um, okay, so I'll just give you a little bit about my story. Jasmine's going to share some of her toys and stuff like that, but I know the light can be uh, can be inviting. So, okay, so my story, I've been in business for 10 years. I'm an entrepreneur. I used to be in medicine, and I left that, that world so that I could uh, really find my passion and find the things that made me most excited, and I could have free time, and I could do it on my own timetable. So um, this is a little distracting, Jazz. No? Okay, so Daddy's gonna come get you in a minute, okay? But I wanted to make sure that you could get on and, and say hi to everybody, and welcome everybody to Gigi Inspire. Can you say Gigi Inspire? Gigi Inspire. That is so not inspired. Okay, so let's inspire everybody. Gigi inspire. Gigi inspire. Okay, so all right. Hey, Serena. Okay, so Jazz, you got to make sure that I can uh, that I can cover this stuff today because uh, everybody's like getting in, and I want to make sure I can give them some value. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, so yeah, I've been in business for quite some time, and what I found is that a lot of people have challenges being in business, and they want to make the transition from like being an employee. Mm -hmm to being a business owner, but there's some challenges along the way and it's, it's hard for them to be able to make them transition. So my job is to help inspire you to be better. Okay, Jazz, you're gonna have to go <laughs> play toys. Okay, so it's to inspire you to be better, right? So here's some of the things that I do to procrastinate and Jasmine's even procrastinating right now because I'm telling her that she's gotta go but she doesn't want to so she's playing with her games, right? So what I've heard of people are giving me ways that they procrastinate, so share with me some of the ways that you guys procrastinate. Um, playing video games, getting on Facebook, scrolling, 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 um, social media, doing busy work, doing housework. Like, how many times have you been like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do that because I have so much laundry to do, I have so much X, Y, Z to do. Um, doing the easy things and not the harder things, right? It's easy to be able to take on the stuff that doesn't take a lot of time or effort, but the harder things take more. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, not calling someone, maybe. You're not calling somebody because... Maybe it's not the right time, or it's uh, it's going to take too much time to make that call, or you don't really want to get into whatever conversation you want to have with them. But this is like a stall tactic. It's like classic procrastination, right? Um, filling your time with like unimportant tasks, like you know you have things to do, but at the same time you decide, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna file my nails instead of like take care of that project that I know I have a deadline for, but I'm just gonna kind of wait it out. So um, also I hear sometimes people say, I got somebody who told me, I have to be in the right mood to do things. Have you ever said that? Have you ever said to yourself or said to your significant other or anyone around you, you know what, I'm just not in the mood to do that right now. That's procrastination too, okay? So we have to be real with ourselves about procrastination 
and kind of get to the point where we know exactly what's going on and why we're doing what we're doing, right? So um, procrastination is not necessarily laziness, right? Because sometimes people think that it's laziness. It's not, it's not that. Um, because laziness is, um, laziness is like apathy, right? It's just basically saying, I don't really care, right? I'm not really worried about it. But procrastination is almost like an active process. But it feels passive because you're like easily kind of taking your, your uh, focus off to something else instead of focusing on what you know you need to get done, which is that ultimate thing that's like kind of hanging over your head. So um, Stephen King said, amateurs sit and wait for inspiration. The rest of us should just get up and go to work, right? So which one are you? Which one are you in that, in that scenario? Are you the procrastinator? Procrastination is a human nature kind of trait. So we all do it, but we have to realize that there are ways to be able to get through it. And I'll give you guys some of those uh, and give you kind of some tips on how to get better at it. Because I procrastinate. I, I mean, I, I was just thinking the other day about, because I came up with this idea on Monday. I thought procrastination is a good one because I think almost everybody can relate. We all do it. Right. So if I think of ways that I procrastinate, like I know that I have, um, you know, X, Y, Z calls that I have to make and something comes in and distracts me. And maybe I'm like, oh, I don't want to make that call. That one's going to take more time than I would like. So I'll make all the other ones or the easy ones and I'll leave that one when I should just take that one and do it in the beginning and get it done. Right. The whole idea is to be able to start to get better at these things. If you face them, if you face the issues that you're having they'll hopefully over time start to improve and you will become more productive, a better business owner, more obviously more productive means you should be making more money, not just busier, but more productive, like effective, right? So, okay, so comment below on some of the ways that you guys procrastinate. I would love to hear it because we all have it and we have to like let it out and let people know. Um, and once you let it out, it'll be gone, okay? So um, why do we procrastinate? Anybody ever wonder why they procrastinate? What is it about them? Like I said, it's not that they're lazy. Um, it's a few different things, right? So it's poor organization oftentimes. That's a big one. Um, and you can kind of help that with like to-do lists. Uh, that's one good, good way you can do it. Um, people sometimes they procrastinate because they worry about failing. They worry about taking that you know, taking that step and not being able to live up to what they, the expectation they might have in their mind or maybe the expectation that their parents have or the expectation the people around them have, right? So it's worrying about failing. It's fear. It's fear-based, right? Something where people are continuing to, to worry somehow that they might not measure up or they might not be able to achieve what they hope they would, right? Um, and sometimes it's fear of success. It's fear of being able to, like, oh, my gosh, what will happen if I succeed? Then I'm going to have all this other stuff, right? All, you know, more success. Maybe it's more money. Maybe it's more attention. Maybe it's X, Y, Z. These are the things that people sometimes worry about in regards to success. So are you worried about success or are you worried about failure? Which one is it? If you can hone down and figure out what it is that you're most concerned about, then you're going to be in a, in a position that you can start to investigate why. And once you face that fear, like I said, it goes away, right? And so you'll start to be able to get some of the, the um, things going the way that you want to, right? That's the whole plan. Um, perfectionists. So this is, this is something that I do because I'm like, oh, well, if I'm not going to be able to do it exactly the way that I want to do it, then I should just not even bother. That's kind of a defeatist attitude because perfectionists are like, it has to be exactly right. It has to be in this order. And this is exactly how it's going to happen. And so sometimes what happens is that, First of all, we have to admit that it's never going to be perfect. It will never be perfect, right? But perfectionists, they procrastinate because in their mind, they're like, if it's not going to be perfect, then I almost might as well not do it as all, at all, or I should be in a position that I wait till that perfect scenario, like I was telling you, the right mood or the, the right um, mindset to be able to make that perfectionist move, right? And so it all ends up the way that you want it to. So... Well, perfectionists have it really tough because they stall because nothing will ever be perfect. So they procrastinate also too, and it's in their minds too, and they waste time doing different things. Um, so let's see, what else? Uh, poor decision making. Um, I'm missing some comments here. I think I feel like I'm missing somehow. Okay, so poor decision making. So somebody who's like kind of going back and forth, trying to figure out if they, you know, what, should I do this or should I do that? What if this happens? What if that happens? Again, it's kind of like a fear-based mentality that it's difficult for you to make a decision because you're rooted in what if this, what if that, 
you know, you're going back and forth. I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, what if so-and-so says this or what if this happens? Like, just do it. You know, at this point, like you're, you're spending your time fear and fear and worry, not making a decision. Sometimes you just have to make the decision and figure out whether it was a good or bad one whatever right you have to make it work whatever decision you make you're not always going to make the right decision but you got to move forward otherwise you're in that like that like um kind of like limbo space where you're not able to get anything done that poor decision making is going to like really hinder you in business um and then unsure the best use of time right so what is and that's something that i do like okay what is going to be the most effective use of my time right now am i going to make these calls am i going to call these people or am i going to sit down and do this analysis what is it that i'm going to do that's going to be the most effective and profitable use of my time right and then sometimes you know it could be you know and and studies show that like it could be like um like add or adhd and you know i'm i'm not of the mindset that that you can label people that way i think you, that Everybody can be, um, they can be as effective as possible if you give them the right tools. I think if you understand how people communicate and how they work, then they can be very effective. So I'm more of like, I don't like to necessarily think like, oh, give them medication or give them this and they can focus better, like give them Ritalin or whatever. I feel like you have to put them in the right environment. Like sometimes people need to, um, to focus and be like that they're most productive. Sometimes they might need to be in a position where they listen to music where they're working or they um, some people like it completely silent or maybe they need to be standing up and walking around while they're while they're working like it all is is different for every single person. And so you have to find like when are you most productive? Are you most productive at a certain period of time? Is it in the middle of the day? Is it in the morning? Is it like at night? Like my husband is like I wish we could do trainings and, and get together it's like at midnight. He's like that would be my my perfect time. He's like I'm terrible in the morning. Well, I'm working on that affirmation, but he's like, I'm not as good in the morning, but at night, like I get my second wind and I'm like ready to go. So when are you most, most productive? You have to kind of start to realize and know yourself a little bit better. Jewel, ooh, you have a question. Um, oh, okay. So, oh, Jewel, you said, I tend, I, I tend to spend too much time overthinking about the outcome of what I need to get done. Yeah, exactly. Hi, Terry. So here's the thing. If you're spending time focusing on the outcome, then it's like some level of worry to it, right? So you have to be able to figure out, well, what's the outcome that I want? <clears throat> what's the outcome that I want ultimately? And then visualize that in your mind and then take the steps to make it happen. Like whatever it is that you need to make happen, you need to feel in your heart, in your mind, in your, in your, um, your mind's eye almost, what is it that I wanna be able to achieve? And you have to start focusing and running towards that so that we're not procrastinating and taking things that, that take us too long to be able to get there, okay? Um, so any other ways that people procrastinate? I know all of you guys that are on here have procrastinated in some way, shape, or form. You're like, oh, I sit and I watch TV, or you know, I'm like, oh, I need to do my laundry instead of you know taking care of this project, or I need to uh, mow the lawn, or I need to go outside, and like my daughters right now are having this whole thing with the, painting the rocks at their house, at our house, so, right? So they collect all these rocks, and I'm like, oh, I gotta put the rocks outside, like I'm not able to wash the dishes because I need to you know, help them put the rocks outside. Now, that doesn't have to be done immediately, but what I'm telling you is there's always something that we're procrastinating on, and so we have to start taking advantage of the fact of being more like aware, being more cognizant of it, and taking steps to be able to get the things done. Now, it's not emergent for me to wash the dishes. In some houses, it would be totally emergent. In my house, I'm like, you know what? It's probably lower on the priority list and some of the other things, right? But what what is your priority list? What's that important that has to be done, right? So start to understand what that is. Okay, so how do I stop procrastinating? There's a couple different ways, and I actually found this um, on a like a mind body website which I thought was pretty good. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to forgive yourself. That's step one, right? So I, Killian Giorgio, I am a procrastinator. I admit it, okay? I'm a recovering procrastinator. I think some of you are recovering procrastinators too. You're just not admitting it right now, okay? So forgive yourself. Allow the, the positive feelings. Like feel good about the fact that you've got, you know, some challenges along the way and it's okay and you're gonna get better at it. Oh, here's a question. So most people procrastinate when it comes to doing things they don't like. Why do I procrastinate on doing things I like to do, like things that will make me money, um, like getting ready to go out, et cetera, right? Well, I think some of the things is that 
we carry this level of worry on those on those things, right? So what if it doesn't happen the way that I want to? Or um, what if I go and I see that client and they don't want what I have? Or they, you know, give me a bunch of objections about it. And so we can kind of, even though we might not be conscious of it, it's kind of in the back of our mind. So we're spending our time, you know, uh, kind of delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. But those are things that you like to do. Like when you're in the moment, you enjoy it. But sometimes it's like this. Um, have you ever not gone to the gym, right? Have you ever thought about, oh my gosh, have you ever put out your put on your workout clothes and your tennis shoes and everything and knock on? Or you've been thinking, you haven't changed, you're sitting there, you're like, I need to get up and, and go work out. I need to take a walk, I need to get dressed for the gym, I need to do something like that, right? Um, but if you haven't done it, right, how much energy does it take for you to get up and go, right? Versus how you feel when you're there and you're working out, and you're like, this is awesome, I feel great, my blood's pumping, like I feel so much more, like my head is clear, all that stuff, right? Like I'm a super much more positive person when I'm working out. That I always used to tell my husband, like the drive to the gym is so much harder than the drive home from the gym. Cause you're like, I'm awesome, look what I did, like so fantastic, right? And you're feeling so good about it. But here's the deal, like if you, if you can just get up the hill to like get done what you need to get done, you'll feel so much better afterwards. So I don't think it's just thinking about like, the worry or the concern that you have in that moment, it's thinking about how awesome is it gonna feel after? Like, how happy am I gonna be after I've you know, made that person a client or I've made some money or I've made a difference in somebody else's life? So start thinking about how good you're gonna feel on the, on the flip side at the end, right? So here's another one. Uh, when, when I procrastinate, does it mean I'm lacking some motivation? It could be, right? It, now, is it something that you don't enjoy? Is it something that, that doesn't make you happy? That's possible. Um, that's easy to, to kind of, Figure out though, like if you're not really happy at the result, like when you get the result, like I was just talking about, if you sat with that client and you didn't feel fulfilled, then maybe it's something that it, you're not really enjoying doing, right? But if you feel great at the end of it, then maybe it's just, you know, you're having some challenges with, with the process, right? Like sometimes it's just that process. So, you know, you kind of have to get to the point where you start to figure out you know, what is it that I like and what is it I don't like about what's going on so that you can start to pinpoint and figure out like where, where's the stop happening? Where's the disconnect in my mind that's making it difficult for me to get up? Because when I get up in the morning, like I'm excited to get going. I'm excited to run my business. I'm excited to talk to my team. I'm excited to, to sit with my clients and make a difference for them. I enjoy it. So I don't really procrastinate in the morning. Like when I know it's time to get up, like I'm like, let's go, right? Let's get up. Let's talk about Think about the things that we're grateful for and let's make a move, right? So um, I don't think it's necessarily motivation, but you have to figure out what is it that motivates you? What is it that motivates you and maybe what demotivates you also, right? Uh, okay, so let's see, what else? Oh, my girls are watching me, how cool. It is so cool, you know? Um, Jasmine was like, I, I, I don't wanna go live with you earlier. I said, Jasmine, what do you procrastinate on? Oh, I procrastinate on math. And I said, yeah, sometimes I think a lot of people procrastinate on math, but also reading. Actually, I think she, she likes math a lot more than she wants to admit, uh, but she uh, sometimes procrastinates on reading a little bit. Um, so we're working on that. And then, oh, and we have to practice our dance too, Jazz. Don't, don't forget that. Okay, so um, if I want others to learn from me, and I'm good at saying uh, I work well under pressure, uh, but I do not like when others wait until the last minute. So I tend to take control and get things done. What advice do you have for me? Okay, so this is an interesting one because a lot of us are control freaks where we feel like like I've got it under control. I'm good. I don't want to worry about it. I don't want to stress about it, right? If um, We've got our stuff under control, um, but we may wait to the last minute to do stuff. Like we may be like high pressure performers where we're under a deadline. I've got to get it done you know, tomorrow by noon. And of course I waited to the last minute because that's the procrastination, right? I have a ton of time. I have lots of time to get this done. And so I go, okay, well, whatever. And so I leave it to the last possible second. And then I'm like crammed in, trying to get it done, working, 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 right? And some people are super productive in that type of time, right? But not everybody. So how, um, think about it this way. If your boss, all right, or somebody who's relying on you or your client, Think about it. Is your client watching you do your stuff to the last possible second? Does that instill confidence in them? Or are they like, oh, I hope she doesn't make a mistake in my plan, right? So think about that way. If you, if you were in a position that your clients or your parents or your kids or what have you, like, or your teammates or people that you're mentoring, if they're watching you 
and seeing you like burn the candle at both ends and like fight it out and like crazy like all night long like is that instilling confidence in them no you're trying to lead by example you're trying to show yourself and train yourself to be better so you can train other people to do the same thing nobody likes waiting for the last second generally some people are able to perform at that level but have you ever completed something have you ever, like pulled an all-nighter in school and you got like you're like okay I did a great job and then you turned it in and then later on you got it back and I was and you're like oh I missed this I missed this oh gosh it's because I was like trying to cram all that information all in at one time and I wasn't like at my highest functioning ability that's why I always talk to my husband I'm like look when we're writing out a plan I like to be able to take several days to do it so I can work on it for a little bit and all my mind is working on it and I'm thinking about it and I have the ideas that I had at that moment and then later I can go back and I can go oh I was thinking this but you know what I also thought of another thing and I can add to it and so if I do a little bit at a time my mind is actually clearer and then I can come back and rethink oh you know what I don't like that or I want to change it but if I do it all in like 24 hours or 12 hours or two hours whenever you're trying to cram that in like you don't have the time to rethink things you're like yeah sounds good okay and you might think better of it and your client may think better of it also so you really have to make sure that you're trying to be your most effective well I'm getting lots of hearts I love this uh, so somebody's liking what I'm saying um, okay Joel should I not try so hard to be a perfectionist and over committing uh, yes <laughs> so here's the thing it's better for you to under promise and over deliver but sometimes like people who are perfectionists we want to like we want to like oh, we end up over promising because we're so really trying to make sure that su it's super perfect experience for the client and they're really happy and what have you but it's better if you show them you know don't necessarily say up front how incredible it's gonna be just tell just show them do you know what I mean? You don't have to tell them how perfect it's going to be. Don't overcommit yourself. Don't spend your time giving necessarily giving your time to everyone because you feel like you can do so much. It's better if you undercommit, but you're able to perform better. So if you have less pressure on yourself, that perfectionist side may not be so like out of whack. Like feeling like I have to do everything. I have to make sure that I cover everything, take care of everything. It's that control thing also. Like, I'm the only one that can do it right. And I was listening to um, Andy Frisella the other day and in his um, MF CEO project when he was talking about, um, like, he had a question that was like, what are what are a couple things that you thought were super important in business that you, um, that like, when you started, you thought were super important, but then later on you found were not that big of a deal. And he said there was a couple things. One was that he said, I need to trust others. So I need to trust that other people like can get the job done, right? Like I used to think like, you know what? I, I don't think anybody could do what I do as good as me. Like how are they ever gonna function? How are they ever gonna do that? That is a totally like selfish kind of attitude. And the idea is, and it's totally not gonna help you grow. So if you can get to the point where you go, you know what? Instead of sitting back and thinking, they're never gonna be able to do that, right? Yes, it's delegating, Jewel, right? They're never gonna be able to do that. It's not that, it's more so of like, let me spend my time and show them how to get better so that they can eventually do what I do, right? Instead of just assuming, yeah, it's never gonna be able to happen. So you have to take on that active role and literally walk people through things so that they can get better and trust that you're not special. <laughs> Right? Like we're not that special. We're not that unique. You know, I'm not the smartest person on earth. I'm not the most articulate. I don't make the most money. Right. I have to trust that other people can do things that I do, but I have to give them that opportunity. I have to have that trust in them that they can create it and they can learn and do exactly what I do. I'm not that special. Right. The other thing was the ego. He was like, you need to check your ego at the door. You need to start to start realizing again that you're not that special, that other people can do what you do. And you have to start being okay with delegating and letting other people take on tasks so that you can start to create a business that that grows for you right because most of the people that are on here are entrepreneurs right and I want you to share this and comment I want you to share this with other entrepreneurs because there are other people out there that need information on how to get better and so if they're gonna take it from me or they're gonna take it from Andy Frisella, they're gonna take it from edmylife.com, they're gonna take it from somewhere, but they need to get the information because most people are in a position now that they will never have the life that they want because they're working for someone else. 
It is like a surefire way to get yourself in a position that you're like spending your life working and killing yourself for someone else. You can never have your dream life. My dream life is what I have right now. I have my kids in my office in spring break, right? We're going to just go do some fun stuff over the weekend. Like I have the ability to have the freedom of time and go to the school that I want them to go to. Like I have a lot of incredible things that I want, but I'm not where I want to be yet. But I know that if I was working in the job that I started out originally in medicine, I would have even less time and I would have less of what I wanted. And in the future, I would not have the dream life of sitting on the beach and having something that runs for me. I'd still be seeing patients, right? So the idea is that as an entrepreneur, you want to buy your life back. And so if you can get better at some of these skills, like not procrastinating and you know trusting that others are, are going to be as good as you and giving them the skill sets to be able to do it, you can create the life that you want. But is it easy? Hell no, it's not easy. It takes time, right? But you have to continue to work at it. Otherwise, you're going to have the same life you always wanted. Like you look sometimes what happens for me, like I looked at my parents and I thought, you know what, when I retire, I want to be able to have a great life. I don't want to have like a pretty good life. I want to be able to have more and I want my kids to be able to have more. And I was never going to do that working for someone else. Terry, thank you for the question. Is there such a thing as relying on your team too much? When I'm in a rut, my team, including you, <laughs> have helped me still make money and I am invisible basically. At some point, is the reality, is the reliability of others too much? You know, I think that that's possible. But you know what? Your situation is unique, and I won't go into too much of that. But I think that the whole idea is to be able to build a team and help them in any way that you can possible, right? So if you can make a difference for them or make it easier for them or do things that you're really good at that maybe they need work on, then that is a team. Right. So if you're able to contribute in some way, shape or form, then you're doing what you can. But I think that when you create a synergy within a team, you can rely on each other. You can figure out what is your skill set? What is my skill set? This person maybe needs some work on this area. You know, partner them up with someone who needs help here. I think that that's the whole idea of teamwork. Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, like, I think, yeah, it's possible to rely too much on your team. But if you're upfront and honest with your team about what you're, what you're capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing, then I don't think there should be any hurt feelings. Plus, the, the lines of communication still have to stay open. Like, when you're working with a team, that, that communication, when stuff goes on, or you're having challenges, or you're not feeling well, what have you, <clears throat> those lines of communication need to stay open. When stuff goes down, like, I, I don't want to say anything bad because my kids are watching now um, but when stuff goes down communication should increase with your team not decrease right so even though it's uncomfortable even though people like we're all working on ourselves and we need to get better and the response may not be exactly what you want it's better and it's growth to be able to communicate with your team and get through this stuff so that you can improve like that's the whole point is to be your best you is to be the person that you were destined to be so you've got to grow into that person and it's not, you know, you're not going to grow into it by not facing challenges and kind of scaling back and being like, oh, well, you know, that's a, that's a bummer. Like you have to take the time and the energy and sometimes have the uncomfortable conversation because that uncomfortable conversation makes you grow into a better person, right? And it makes you grow into a better business owner and it could create and open a lot more doors for you because you're doing that, right? So the growth is important. I appreciate so much how much I've grown in the 10 years that I've been in business and continue to grow every day. I'm still learning every single day. I still call my mentors. I still ask questions. I still am like, should I text them or should I not bother them? I don't know, right? So you have a team all around you. When you have a team, like that's a, a level of support. That's a level of family also. So you want to take advantage of that as much as you can, but communicate with them so they know what's going on. So they don't feel like, like, like you said, you're like isolated. Um, it's better to be able to take that on and, and give them more, okay? Give them whatever you can, okay, Terry? Um, hey, Wayne, thanks for joining. Hey, Angie. Hey, Christine. Hey, Donnell. Oh, I got people from all over the country joining. I'm so excited. Okay, um, aside from learning the hard way, procrastinating to the point of missing deadlines, what are some of the ways I can overcome this? Okay, so we kind of talked about this. Just the idea is that you want to just start working on yourself and start getting a little bit better at um, – spacing out the time. So I'll give you guys some tips because I think some of these um, some of these will answer the question. So I'm almost done, guys. Okay, so forgive yourself. We talked about that. So no, step two is um, commit to the task, right? Like focus on doing. Focus on what you have to do. Even like I said, if it's small bites, a little bit, um, so you can do a little bit at a time. And then 
Step three is like promise yourself a reward. So if you're sticking to that and you're keeping your little promises to yourself and you're doing like a little bit at a time, give yourself a reward. Like, you know, take yourself for Froyo or, you know, get your toes done. I, I mean, as you can do that if you're a guy. Or, you know, like buy yourself a new tie or, you know, go, go to dinner or something like that. Like give yourself rewards so that you feel good about staying on task because that procrastination, it's human nature. It's super easy to do it. We all do it. And even if it's not something that you regularly do, you've done it in your life, right? Um, so treat yourself to something and um, it, like have your little victories, okay? Um, ask someone to check on you. So maybe it's like somebody that you, tr that you trust, a good friend, you know that friend that's like, hey, like they can totally check you, like what are you doing, right? Maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your kids. Like sometimes, you know, my kids are like, hey, how come, you know, we're not going to such and such? Oh, because we didn't get done what we needed to get done. Like sometimes it's good for your kids to check you also, right? Um, and it's, uh, it's like just having another person to kind of be accountable to, and that helps. Um, oh, act as you go. So I heard a long time ago, like touch it once. So when it comes across your desk and you need to take care of it, touch it once, handle it, like, do the thing, call the person, get everything done so it's handled, and boom, you can move on to the next one, and you're not thinking like, oh, I gotta keep that on my list because I did part of it but not the rest of it. Like, just handle it all at one time so it's done, okay? Um, and then rephrase your internal dialogue. Not like, I have to or I need to, like, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I choose to, right? Change that internal dialogue. Reframe the way you look at things. Like, I choose to get up in the morning. I choose to do this project. I choose to be able to work with my team. Like there's all these things that you can do, but reframe it in your mind the way you talk to yourself, okay? Um, and minimize distractions. Put yourself in a position to win. Like if you know that you're not as good in the morning, then maybe schedule that like more productive time, like middle of the day or at night or you know late afternoon, whatever it is, like put yourself in a position to win. When am I best? When am I most productive? When do I like get my stuff done? When am I really, really good and like totally on point? Put yourself in a position to win and do it then, right? Do the best that you can at that point, okay? Okay, and then this is the last one. So if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Um, so aim, <laughs> Aim to do the hard stuff first, right? Like, you know, they say like um, the Band-Aid, right? So you have a Band-Aid on and like they say, don't pull it off like a little bit of time, like rip that sucker off, like just just do it, right? So the hard thing you gotta do first. If you do that thing first, then you can feel good that like the rest of the stuff is like easy peasy, but what happens is most people are like, they do all the easy stuff and then that like harder thing is like hanging over their head or like weighting them on their shoulder. Like just do all the hard stuff first and get it done. So you're in a position that you're not so worried, right? And like you can coast the rest of the day because you've got all this stuff. Oh, Stacy, you're so pretty. <laughs> Hi, Stacy. Um, you're so sweet. Okay, so I think that's everything. I don't know if anybody has any other questions, but today was fun. Like, you know, it was really kind of cool because I asked so many people about, what do you think about procrastination? And then, and they didn't say like, oh, that's a great topic. They said, oh, I'm really good at it. So I was like, okay, this is a topic that I think a lot of people would benefit from. Um, Jewel, so I make lists and I prioritize and I end up with lots of lists, get lost and everything seems hard. So sometimes, so here's one other tip that I got from a, um, a coach a long time ago, his name was Sam Lin. He said, you can prioritize your lists in A, B, and C. So you have like the A is like, I absolutely have to get it done today. It's a must, it's a must, it's a must. Um, B is like, it's important, but I could probably push it a little bit longer. And C is like, I just have to get it on the list at some point and, and get it done. It's not urgent or anything like that. So if you can maybe prioritize your list in the A, B, C, that might be a good way to do it so that you have all your lists, but you're keeping them together and you're making sure to um, get the things done. And like some of those things maybe move to the next day. So if you prioritize your list A, B, C, that might help you, okay? So I hope you guys had an awesome, awesome time. I hope you enjoyed some of this. Please, like I said, like, comment, share. If you have other questions, like I'll come in and I'll answer them later. I'll, I'll comment and, and answer them later for you guys. But I just wanna tell you, like, I love doing these videos. It's been such an, like, really therapeutic for me and we've gotten some really great responses. A lot of people have been asking me a ton of questions about how to do things and how to take on more business and, and what have you, how to make that transition from being an employee to a business owner. So it's just really cool in the process. And I appreciate you guys. And uh, I just wanna tell you, like, be inspired to have a great life.